Water effects on miniature terrain can make for stunning tabletop scenery. Too bad I am still using this to represent water. I've been relying on colored felt and sheets of plastic on the tabletop for years. I would use this blue felt for deep water and this bumpy sheet of plastic for shallow water such as a river crossing. It works, but it just does not look good. Surely after all of the terrain crafting that I've done over the years, I must have found a better way to simulate water. I got it! Use the plastic on top of the blue felt. Alone they are bad, but together they are- In all seriousness, I want to make better water, and there are some ideas that I want to try out. In this video, I'm going to play around with some water effect ideas while making some scatter terrain. I saw this clear PVA glue at the craft store a few years ago. Other miniature terrain crafters like me have tried to simulate water using this stuff and had some success. I tested it out on this old mud pit terrain piece I made out of modeling clay years ago. It dried with a nice glossy finish and while it did shrink, it kept a noticeable thickness by the end of the curing process. I'm gonna give this glue another try, but on some better looking terrain. On the miniature painting front, I've been using a top coat of gloss varnish to add a wet sheen to the details of some of my monster minis. I wonder if this gloss is enough to simulate water effects on terrain. I will test this as well. I will craft three pools. The bases will be made of this heavy paperboard. Safety comes first when working with sharp blades. Straight blocky edges look harsh. This bevel looks more natural. We all know how water works. Gravity pulls the water downhill. It ends up trickling into depressions in the ground. We get puddles and pools when the water collects faster than it can drain away. If this were a segment of a big wargaming table, then I would carve out a depression for the water and have some very realistic pools. These pieces are scatter terrain. They're meant to be placed on top of the gaming surface, so Rather than carving out a depression, I have to build up an embankment around the puddle. This is a sacrifice of realism for the sake of usability. I'm building the embankment out of wood filler. This material is a doughy paste with a fine texture. I built a ring of this stuff around the edges of the bases and made sure to smooth the sides into gradual slopes. I need to give this some time to dry. Miniature rocks will add detail to these pieces. The biggest of the rocks are scrap pieces of XPS foam. Small chipped pebbles will simulate smaller rocks. A layer of slightly watered down PVA glue and a sprinkling of sand will give the embankments some texture.
The center of the pools are not getting any texturing because I want to represent water that is deep enough in the center that we cannot see the ground underneath. The ground will also be painted in a way to support this. A few drops of PVA on top will seal the sand in place. In hindsight, I may have gone overboard with the rocks on this small puddle. Time to paint these pieces. I want the water to have color, or at least appear to have color. One way to do this is to add paint or ink to the water material. Another way we can accomplish this is to paint the surface that is going to be underneath the transparent water material. I will add paint to the clear glue for at least one of these puddles to try it out. For all the pools, I will be painting the subsurface some sort of blue or green. For the small pool, I decided to wet blend a teal into a sandy color. I started by covering the bottom of the basin and the inner embankments with this beige. I followed up with a lot of this dull teal in the center and then proceeded to spread it up the banks, mixing it with the beige as I went. It is important to note that both colors of paint are still wet while I'm spreading the teal up the sides of the pool. The teal color gets mixed thinner and thinner as it spread farther out, and this creates a gradient. I'm hoping to create a visual effect where the center of the pool looks deeper and more colorful, and as you get closer to the edges where the water is shallower, you start to actually see the ground underneath. The sharp edges of beige are not ideal. With the wet blending done, I can stretch the sandy color out over the banks to hopefully make a transition to the dark brown. This looks like a coastal color scheme. I decided against wet blending two colors together for the other pools. Instead, I will be applying just the color of the deep water and thin it out towards the edges. I want this long pool to have blue water. I covered center with blue paint. I start dipping my brush in water as I get close to the edges of the pool. I painted up the banks, but the color was still too strong even after I added water. I washed the brush, filled it with water, and stroked along the banks to wash down most of the paint. The result is a nice gradient of color that fades to a wash where the water effects are supposed to appear shallower. I used the same technique on the round pool. I chose a green color for this pond because I plan on making it look swampy. Dark brown ground is pretty generic. It works with most scenery settings. The same goes for gray rocks. This long puddle is going to be a test of transparent water. I simply cracked open my bottle of clear PVA glue and filled the basin. The glue is a little thick. I used a brush to spread it out to the embankments and around some of the rocks. The puddle looks pretty full right now, but it will shrink down as it dries. If you have tried to create water effects for miniature gaming, then please post a comment down below. What materials did you use? How was the experience? Have you tried what I'm doing here? The rounder puddle is going to be a test of translucent water. I can make this puddle look muddy or scum filled by mixing in green and brown paint. 
Mixing the drop of paint into the glue can introduce bubbles to the mix, especially if you mix it fast. Next time, I will try for a slow stir. The glue is thin enough to allow these bubbles to rise to the surface. They can be skimmed off the top with a brush or stick. I left some bubbles in the green pool to make it look like the gross water is kind of bubbling or boiling. The drying time of this glue is a significant downside when using it to simulate water. If the clear PVA is applied in a thick layer, as I have done, then it can take days to fully dry. That is a lot of time for dust or hair to get blown around and possibly settle on the wet, sticky surface. I covered these pieces with a box while they cured to keep the surfaces clean. For the smaller puddle, I'm going to try something different. This piece will have a flat water effect created solely by the teal paint and a couple of coats of gloss varnish. This puddle will lack that transparent depth that I'm looking for in the clear glue, but it will still have that glossy surface. My guess is that it will probably not look as good as the other two pieces. Still, it will make for an interesting comparison. I followed up with two more coats of varnish over the water area. The two clear water effects finished curing a few days later. I am liking the way they look so far. It is obvious that the glue shrunk considerably. The surface of the glue was up to the edges when I first filled the pool. Now we can see glossy slopes descending to the centers of the pools. There is some depth to the water effects. It came out thin, but it's not too dimensional. Another thick layer of glue might be enough. This time I added a little more brown to the murky puddles glue. The first layer of the glue does not look like realistic scum filled water. It just looks like green slime. The brown in this second layer may help tone down that green. Now doesn't that color make you hungry? That is one nasty shade of green. As the glue cures, it shrinks. As the glue shrinks, it pulls on the surfaces that it is gripping. This glue has a hold on most of the surface area, so I expected some warping. I carefully bent the pieces back into shape a few times while the glue was curing and also after the glue had cured. This caused a few cracks on the embankments that I had to patch with wood filler and glue and then repaint. The warping probably would be more pronounced on a larger pool. I have some counter warping ideas that I would like to try the next time I build these. The combination of the glue's viscosity and the long cure time means that it can level out on its own. This is good, but that means that the pieces need to be stored on a flat surface for the duration of the long curing process. Do not overfill the area that will contain the water effects. The glue can flow out if the surface is not perfectly flat. This happened with the second layer of the clear puddle. I poured too much glue inside and stored it on a surface with a slight angle. A big blob of glue. The gabagool. No, not gabagool. Blob of glue. The gabagool. No. No gabagool. A big blob of glue slowly flowed out over the course of an hour. It was too slow for me to immediately notice, but I had a surprise when I lifted the cover to check on the piece. Something occurred to me as I was working on this project. This glue is washable, which means that it is at risk of being reactivated if it comes into contact with real water. I want to protect these terrain pieces, so I went over the surface of the clear glue water effects with multiple coats of gloss varnish. My hopes are that this layer of varnish will seal and protect the surface from water and other forms of damage. 
These pools of water are done. I think the clear PVA worked pretty well. It did not cure as thick as some of the more expensive water effect options, but thick enough to have a noticeable transparent depth. It did take two thick layers to build up that depth, and each layer took around three days to cure. There is some warping due to the glue shrinking, but the sturdy bases appear to have helped in this regard. The shape of the glue in these pools ended up being concave. This is less realistic, but visually this does not seem to be much of an issue. When you're looking down upon the pools from above, the concave shape is less noticeable. This is especially true for the transparent pool. The flat water effects created solely by the glossy varnish have not had quite the same effect. The varnish lacks that visually appealing depth that thickens in the center of the pool and smooths out the slopes of the embankment. The shape of the slopes are more defined, making the concave surface of the water obvious. The glossy varnish does make the pool look wet, but the water just looks flat. This effect would work great for making patches and puddles of opaque mud. I definitely could have gone for a flatter edge on this small pool. The flat water effect does not need the embankment as there is no transparent medium to be contained. Speaking of a glossy surface, the clear glue dried with an excellent smooth glossy finish. Unfortunately, it is not waterproof, and varnishing it changed the surface texture of the water effect. Here is a before and after comparison. You can see how the surface is more rippled after the layers of varnish. I think what happened was that the varnish reactivated the PVA glue and the brush strokes ended up reshaping the surface as I was spreading it over the glue. I still prefer this over leaving the surface unprotected. This change is less visible on the green pool because I applied it much faster. Coloring the glue itself worked great. The clear glue is PVA, which is water-based, just like my acrylic paints. They successfully mixed to create a translucent material as seen in the green water effect of the round pool. I was initially aiming for a swampy pond color, but ended up with a pool of slime. I'll certainly find a use for it. As for the coloring underneath the water, I think this turned out okay. The blue on the bottom of the long pool looks nice. Kind of looks like a blue sky is being reflected in the water. I also like the way the blue fades in intensity by the edges. Perhaps a darker blue-green would look better for deep water. Looking over my collection, I can see how I have improved my miniature terrain crafting, but the ways I represent water on the tabletop have remained stagnant. There were test projects here and there, but not much came of them. These pools came out better than any of my previous attempts, but there is still room for improvement. I plan on testing these techniques more in the future. Hopefully I can craft some better terrain and flush away this blue felt water. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then dive into that pool. It looks like there's a subscribe button hidden at the bottom. I need to experiment more with this type of train, but until then, keep making and keep playing. Have a good one.